In this video, we're going to put together a collection of classes that can be used to display messages inside of a recycler view. So before we get started, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add in our dependencies because we're going to have two dependencies when we start working with recycler views. One is on the recycler view itself, of course, and the next one is for another view called the card view. Now the card view is a new view that's introduced in Android 5, and there's a support library that also makes it available in Android 4. We're going to use the card view as sort of a visual thing. It's not really all that, there's not a whole lot of functionality, I guess, with the card view. It just looks really nice. And we'll see an example of how it looks in the next video. But like I said, in this video, we're just getting things set up. So let's go ahead and uh, throw in two new dependencies. The first dependency is going to be, of course, com.android. And then we need our support colon recycler view uh, recycler view dash v7 colon plus now for the card view we're going to say compile com android support card view dash v7 colon plus and then I'm going to say sync now, which will have Gradle go and go grab those jars off the internet for me and add them to the project. So that's really cool. I, I don't know. I'm sure I've said this before, but life before package managers was not very fun. Okay, so the order that I'm going to do this is basically is, is pretty backwards. It's basically inside out, kind of like what we did in the, in the last video. So I'm going to start off with the layout file for the list items. So each individual message will have its own list item layout. Then I'm going to do the view holder class. Then I'm going to do the adapter. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and start off with our layout. So I'm going to right click layout, say create new layout resource file and it's going to be called list item message and our list item message it's not going to have a linear layout as its root element so i'm going to remove the uh, the orientation attribute and i'm going to change the root ele element to android dot support dot v7 dot widget dot card view so that's the root element of this whole thing then I'm going to give the root element some attributes. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a layout height of wrap content because it's a list view item. I'm going to give him a app colon card corner radius. And I'm going to set that to zero DP. Now the app namespace needs to be imported. So I'll hit alt enter or um, alt enter. And that'll bring up the, uh, the XML namespace for app, which just points to res auto. Of course, we need this just like what we did before with the app compat library in the menu XML files. We need this because this comes from an external jar and not the SDK itself. And then we're also going to say um, app colon card use compat radio or compat padding set that to true and then set the layout margin to 3dp so the app use compat padding is used to, de to determine if there should be any compensation for the padding because of the difference between how card views are rendered in android 5 and android 4 uh, this makes it the compatible this makes it so the padding of the card view gets applied to both operating systems equally all right, so let's go ahead and move down from here and let's open up our relative layout. We'll do a fill parent, fill parent. The card view requires uh, one one child, so that's gonna be our relative layout. We'll give him a padding of three DP. Now let's open up our image view, which will be 64 DP by 64 DP, not 60 P, that'd be a really um, skinny image there. And then we'll say scale type is fit XY and we'll say ID is ID slash list item message avatar. So this is gonna be the avatar of the user who sent this message. Next up, let's do a text view. And this text view is going to have a wrap content, wrap content for its width and height. And I'm also gonna say to end of, and we'll say to end of message avatar. I'm gonna give him a text of display name. I'm going to give him a text size of 14 SP. I'm going to give him text style of bold. And I'm going to give him a text color of DE000000. We can see him over there to the right. Let's go ahead and also give him an ID before I forget. So I'm going to give an ID of list item message display name. Now, also before I forget, I also want there to be some distance between the image view and the text view. So I'm going to give a margin end of 16 DP to the image. So it pushes that over. 
Now let's go ahead and create another text view with a wrap content, wrap content. He will be to end of message avatar and he will be below message um, display name. He will have a text of, let's just do like 01211992. So because it's going to be a date, so I want to be able to see what that looks like. Uh, as far as his style, I guess we can give him a text color of 444. Give him a text size of 12 dp or 12 sp, and then of course I'm going to want to give him an ID. And the ID I want to give him is ID um, list item created at. Maybe also this might look a little bit better if on my display name there was some the margin. So on my display name I'm going to add a margin margin bottom of uh, let's say um, three three dp. And then I want to also add a margin bottom to my create of that because we have one more thing to do. So I'm going to add a 3dp margin bottom here as well. So now let's create our last text view. Our last text view will be wrap content, wrap content to end of avatar or message avatar. And he will be below message created at, which, uh, whoops, I misspelled that. It's supposed to be list item message created at. So message created at. And um, this guy is just going to tell you if if the if it's been received or if this message that you're looking at is a sent or received message. So I'm going to give him a text of received, and I'm going to give him a text size of 12 sp. And I think that pretty much wraps up how I want messages to be displayed in lists. So yeah, that's not super exciting. So what I'm going to do now is before we move on to create my view holder that will hold all these views, I want to go ahead and create an intermediate class, a class that's going to be used to represent a message object in our program. So I'm going to come up here to our services namespace, and I'm going to open up my entities namespace, and I'm going to right click, select new Java class, and I'm going to say message. So we'll have this class called message, which is going to be responsible for representing everything that a message can have. For his fields, he will have a private int ID, a private calendar, calendar created at, he will have a private string short message, private string long message, private string image URL. He'll also have a private user details other user, private boolean is from us, a private boolean is red, and a private boolean is selected. Now let's go ahead and generate his constructor. So I'm going to hit Alt Insert Inner, and I'm going to select pretty much everything here except for is selected. We're not going to uh, get is selected from the constructor. So I'll go ahead and hit OK, and this is the constructor that was generated for us. So all it does here is it just grabs all these uh, values we can break this up a little bit, clean this up a little bit, because that's a really long line there. Okay, so next up, I want to go ahead and create all of my getters. So I'm going to hit Alt, Insert, select Getter, and I'm going to create a getter for everything. So there's all of our getters. Now, I also want to create a setter, and I want the setter to be for is selected. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom, hit Alt, Insert, select Setter, but I'm only going to select is selected. So now we have a setter. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is eventually we're going to need this class to be parsable. So just like what we did with our user details, if you recall how it said implements parsable and then I implemented these two methods and then I created this creator, we're going to do the same thing here with message. So I'm going to say implements parsable and then I'm going to hit alt insert inner to implement these two methods describe content and write to parcel. I'm not going to bother with implementing these methods yet, like what we did before, because we'll deal with that later once we talk about how to implement parsables. And then I'm going to create my creator. So I'm going to say public static final creator, creator, creator of type message equals, or creator, equals new creator. And uh, we're going to then throw a semicolon at the end to complete that. So again, just stubbing that out, we'll, we'll fill all this in later. But now that we have our message object created, we can now create our view holder. So let's open up our views package. 
uh, right click, select new, create Java class, and I'm going to create a message view holder. Now the message view holder is going to have a handful of uh, private properties. Now we're going to make this view holder have all private properties because we're going to have this view holder be responsible for its own population of these fields. So we're going to have a private image view avatar, a private text view display name, a uh, private text view created at, private card view card view, and a private text view sent received. Uh, we also want to make sure that this class inherits from uh, view holder. So we're going to say extends recycler view dot view holder. And that of course is going to require we generate that constructor. So put your keyboard cursor there on the squigglies, hit alt enter enter, and that'll create our constructor for us. So that's what the constructor is right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a method called populate. So I'm going to say public void populate context context message message. And on the populate method, we're basically just going to populate these views, uh, which by the way, I, I almost forgot before we populate the views, we should actually e extract them from the item view. Um, this item view, I'm going to replace with view just to make typing a little bit easier. And then I'm going to say, uh, um, this dot or card view equals cast to card view view. Now we can do that because the view that we're going to be receiving is simply an inflation of this layout. And since this layout's root element is a card view, we can simply cast the entire view back into a card view right here. Now let's do avatar cast to image view, um, view find view by ID r.id message avatar. Uh, we do need to import the r class, so be sure to hit alt enter import class. So we'll do message avatar display name equals text view view find view by dr.id dot display name, which this case it's that. And then we have our created at equals text view view find view by dr.id created at. So our message item message created at. And then we need our sent received, which is another text view, view, find view by ID, r.id, sent received. Or what did I call that? Did I give that a name? Did I forget to give this an ID? I did forget to give this an ID. Let's go ahead and give this uh, this received guy, this guy, an ID. I'm going to give him an ID of uh, list item message sent received. Now let's jump back into the message view holder and go ahead and alias out that lit, that view. Okay, so now all of our views are populated. We can go ahead, or not populated, but, but established. We can go ahead and populate them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say item view set tag message. So the most important thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, when we populate a particular view with a particular message, I'm going to set the tag of that particular view to the message that we populated. Then I'm going to say Picasso dot with context uh, dot load message dot get other user dot get avatar URL dot into avatar. So we'll use Picasso to load that in. Then I'm going to say string created at equals date utils dot get or sorry format date time format date time, uh, passing in the context as well as the, well, let's do this on separate lines. We'll pass in the context, then we'll pass in message dot get created at dot two or uh, milliseconds, get time in milliseconds. And then we'll pass in date utils, um, format show date with date utils, format show time. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say set received dot set text. And we'll say message dot is from us question mark sent otherwise received. So if uh, the message is from us, then we sent it. Otherwise, we received it. And then I'll say display name dot uh, set text. And then we'll pass in message get other user get display name and then we'll say created at or this dot created at dot set text created at 
The last thing I want to do is I want to switch up things a little bit depending on the state of the message. So I'm going to say int color resource ID. And I'm going to say if message dot is selected, then I'm going to say color resource dot ID dot equals r dot color dot list item message selected background. Or how about background selected? Now this color doesn't exist yet, but we, it will soon. And I'm also going to say card view dot set card elevation and set that to five. Then I'm going to say else if message dot is red color resource ID equals r dot color dot list item message background. Then I'm going to say else if message or sorry, just else at this point because we have no other states I want to really care about. Oh, I do want to set the card view elevation um, to two in this case. And then I'm going to say color resource ID equals r dot color dot list item message background unread. And then card view dot set elevation three. Then at the end here, I'm going to say card view dot set card background color equals context dot get resources dot get color color resource ID. So as you see here, what I'm doing is, is I'm switching on the state of the message and I'm assigning a particular ID of a color resource to this color resource ID integer. And then I'm using the context to actually get that real color out of our resources. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and before moving on, I want to go ahead and implement these colors. So I'm going to hit Alt Insert. Well, I mean Alt uh, Enter. And I'm going to say uh, create, color res create color value resource enter and the resource value for well let's see what one we're doing we're doing the background selected now the background selected is going to be 8c 9 e f e and i'll hit okay now let's go ahead and do our our um normal background so our red background so i'm going to say create color resource value and i'm going to say uh, hash for our normal background, I'm just going to say E. And then for our unread, I'm going to say, um, how about FFF2CF? Whoops. And this set elevation, I didn't mean to say set elevation. I'm going to say set card elevation. Okay, so basically but what I just did with all those resources, by the way, they ended up in my colors.xml file. Notice how all these resources appeared. Really, using IntelliJ properly and knowing all the shortcuts and everything really, really, really does save you a lot of time. And with how verbose this whole process is, that is very important. Okay, so that's our message view holder. Now let's go ahead and write our adapter. So I'm going to come up here to my views package, right click, select new, and I'm going to create a messages adapter. And the messages adapter will not surprisingly inherit from recycler view dot adapter of messages message view holder. And I'm going to go ahead and hit alt enter enter to implement all three of these methods. Then at the top, I have a handful of things I need to uh, to create for as far as fields. So I'm going to create a private final layout inflator uh, layout inflator private final base activity activity private final on message clicked listener listener now this this class doesn't ex this interface does not exist yet but it will here shortly and then a private final array list of message messages then i'm going to go ahead and hit alt insert enter and i'm going to select activity and listener for the two parameters i want to get from the constructor so that just went ahead and created this constructor for me then I want to say messages equals new array list. So we want to instantiate our messages array list. Then I want to say layout inflator equals activity dot get layout inflator. All right. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a method that exposes my array. So I'm going to say public array list of message get messages, which will simply return messages. And then what I'm going to want to do here is... Let's go ahead and uh, really quickly implement this interface real fast. The interface is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go all the way to the bottom here, and I'm going to say public interface on message clicked listener. 
which will have a void on message clicked method, which takes in a message message. Okay, let's make sure that we spelled that right, because that red should be going away, and the red's gone away. Okay, so uh, now what we have to do is we have to implement these three methods. So on our on create view holder, I'm going to say view view equals layout inflator dot inflate r dot layout. Now, of course, we have to hit alt insert to import the r class r dot layout and we'll do list item message parent and false just like we usually do. And then what we're going to do is say view dot set on click listener and we're going to say this. Now that code will error out for a second and we'll fix that in momentarily. Then we're going to say return new message view holder passing in view. So then let's do our on bind view holder. Our on bind view holder is very easy. It's simply holder dot populate activity and then messages dot get position. So we're just delegating the population of this particular view to our view holder. And then for our get item count, we're simply going to return messages.size. Now let's go ahead and implement our on click listener real fast. So on our view on click listener, I'm going to go ahead and put my keyboard cursor on these squigglies. Then I'll hit alt enter and I'll select make message adapter implement on click listener and hit enter and enter. Now we have this on click method. I'll change this uh, parameter to view because I hate when it says v that irritates me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if view dot get tag instance of message, then message message equals cast a message view get tag, and then I'm going to say um listener dot on message clicked message. So if you recall in our view holder, we set the tag of that view to a message object. And now when that view is clicked, we'll extract that and then delegate the responsibility of the actual behavior to the listener, listener that was passed in as a constructor parameter. Alrighty, uh, that pretty much wraps up my messages adapter. So from this point on, now we can easily write code that displays messages. Now, this isn't going to be the adapter we're going to be using for the inbox. That's going to be the more complicated one. Um, but for now, this will do for our purposes. So yeah, uh, I guess we'll see you guys in the next video.